Hey guys, so uh, we're going to finish off, uh, or I guess start chapter 12 now. So this is the last of our videos. Um, start with one theorem that uh, I'm sure most of you have seen before, and then do one that you probably have not seen before. Uh, first one. Uh, there are infinitely many prime numbers. And then we'll actually look at primes that are congruent to 3 modulo 4. Uh, so there <coughs> are infinitely many prime numbers. Infinitely many primes. Okay, so our method of attack here, it's uh, not a very satisfying proof of the fact that it's not saying here's your list of primes, you know, your first one, second one, third one, fourth one, so on like that. What it says is it says that, uh, uh, trust me, there's another one out there that's bigger than this number. And so it's not very satisfying, but you know, it's nonetheless a great technique I will be using. So the idea here is that if I give you a natural number, or say you give me a natural number, and I can always find a prime larger than that natural number, that would suffice to prove that there are infinitely many prime numbers, right? Because we know the natural numbers go on forever. So uh, that, that's our method of attack. Given any natural number, can I find a prime larger than that one? Uh, so let's see how that proof works here. Let little n be a natural number. Yeah. We're trying to find a prime bigger than that. Okay. Uh, consider the number. This is the clever part of this entire proof. Consider the number big N which is going to be 2 times 3 times 4 times dot 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 all the way up to little n. So multiply all this, so if little n is 7, 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6 times 7, then here's the really clever part of this entire proof, plus 1. So that's big n. Okay, we're going to use, use this guy to find a prime number that's bigger than little n. And since we can do that for any natural number, we have there's an infinite number of prime numbers. So, you give me 7 here, I'll find a prime larger than 7. You give me 32, we'll find a prime larger than 32. Uh, unfortunately, we don't say, here's your prime exactly what it is. We say, hey, trust me, that dude's out there, it exists. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, let's look at this. So, if big N, or prime, we're done, right? If big N certainly is going to be bigger than little N. Got that plus 1. So, suppose big N <coughs> is not prime. <coughs> right, so if big N is not prime, what we do know, though, is that uh, big N does have prime factors, right? And so that's what we're going to be doing now is looking at this and saying, okay, what could the prime factors of big N be? Because that's one of the things that we know now because we did that in class that every number can be written as a product of prime factors. Um, fundamental theorem of arithmetic, right? We proved that. All right, so, uh, and we'll use the division algorithm here. Um, and so, I think at our case where we're at right now, uh, with our understanding of mathematics, we're able to kind of do this in one, one big swoop You'll see this done sometimes with some undergraduates and other students in which they say, could 2 be a prime factor? And you say, well, 2 could be a prime factor because here is, remember, a equals b times q plus r is our division algorithm with r less than b, right, our divisor, or less than or equal to b minus 1. So we say a, you could write it like this, a equals b times, here's q plus 1, right? That's our division algorithm. And what this shows right now is that the remainder is 1 if I divide by 2. If I divide big N by 2, I get a remainder of 1, right? And so that shows that 2 could not divide big N. I say, okay, well, what if I put 3 here? Remember, we can commute these guys in any way we want to. If I put 3 here, 3 times 2 times 4, and something like that, plus 1, right? So it shows we get a remainder of 1 when I divide by 3. If I divide by 4, remainder 1. Divide by 5, remainder 1. Divide by 6, remainder 1. All the way up to little n, right? So, if I divide big N by any of these guys, I always get a remainder of 1. Which means that 2, 3, 4, and so on like that, all the way up to little n, 
do not divide big n, right? That's our division algorithm that we always get over here one and the tricky, uh, or not the tricky, the clever part of using one here is that's always going to be smaller than, right? Remember, we need the remainder to be smaller than the divisor, so it's always going to be smaller than any one of those guys that we choose there. So let's write that out in a nice general format here. We say notice for any k between uh, sorry, 2 and little n, when we divide big N by k, we get a remainder of 1 um, K is not defined big N. Okay? And that's all you need to put there. If you want to, you can say, you put, I'll put this in quotes, so your call if you don't put this or not. So, by division algorithm, you can sneak that in wherever you feel appropriate. Division algorithm, N would equal 2, uh, let's extract the K out in front there, that's our divisor, so we're dividing N by K. K times 2 times 3 times dot 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 times, oops, yeah, dot 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 times k minus 1, right, times k plus 1, times dot 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 all the way up to little n, plus 1. So all we're doing is we're extracting this k out, putting it out in front, just for, really just prettiness, to make it look nice and pretty like the division algorithm. a equals b times q, this entire thing, sorry here, this entire thing is our quotient, plus 1. By the division algorithm, n equals this, right, so... Um, we get a remainder of 1 upon dividing n by k, right? Hence, you get a remainder of 1, so you can put all that in for the division algorithm. Hence, if you get a remainder of 1, k does not define big n, right? Um, so this is a nice just well laid out that it works for any of those guys. But again, you could say, show the case for 2, show the case for 3, 4, and the same. Well, clearly this works all the way up to little n, right? Uh, and so, however, we know big N does have prime factors, right? Fundamental theorem of arithmetic. So big N does have prime factors. It's just those prime factors cannot be anywhere in here, right? These, they're factors, they divide, right? These must exceed little n. And uh, we have a prime number larger than little n. Right? And I'm fine stopping there. Uh, not saying what it is, we just know, okay, this dude right here, you know, even if you take n to be, I guess I'm maybe I can, you guys can see this, if we take n to be 7, we take big n to be 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6 times 7 plus 1. You find this number right here, okay, what we know with this is that. 2 doesn't divide it, 3 doesn't divide it, 4 doesn't divide it, 5, 6, 7, none of those guys divide it because we always get a remainder of 1. But this does, whatever this number is, does have prime factors, right? Wherever they're at, the thing that we do know is they are above 7. Okay? And so it's not satisfactory saying that, or satisfying saying that, okay, here's this prime number that it is. You're saying, no, trust me, it's they're above 7. Since we can do that for any arbitrary natural number n, then we have that there's an infinite number of prime numbers. So that's uh, our first one there. <clears throat> and we have one more theorem here. <clears throat> and that's there are infinite number of primes that are congruent to 3 mod 4. There are 
infinitely many primes. Can grow to three modulo four. Okay, so what we're going to do is suppose we have this finite list, we're going to find a guy that wasn't from the list, add it to it, we could keep going on like this in this constructive manner, we're always finding another prime that's going to go to 3 mod 4, and so now there's going to be an infinite number of those guys. Okay, so first off, just suppose that we have this list of primes that are congruent to 3 mod 4, given by, so obviously 3 is going to be congruent to 3 mod 4, so suppose the list of primes congruent to 3 mod 4, congruent to 3, and I'll start just writing mod 4 here, is given by, so we'll start with 3, and then P1, P2, dot, 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 and I go all the way up to what, just make sure I match up the same letters here, P sub R. So consider, just like we did at the big end, how we did all this product and then plus one, consider the number big end, which is four p one dot 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 through p r plus three. So a very similar argument here. Okay. Now what we're going to do a little bit differently here is. Let's say, let the prime, because we know it's a prime factorization, factorization of big N be, and I'll write it below this dude right here, I think you use Q, Q1, dot, 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 all the way up through, and again, let me see, just so, so we match up here, I use an S for this one, through QS. So we have a number here, okay? We're writing in this way. We construct well, we construct it in this way. And we said, okay, this is a number. Now let's find a prime factorization for it. We know we can do that when we get q1 to qs. So these are all prime numbers. Okay. Uh, and so first off, notice I'll just write qi for any of the i's in general here. Notice qi is not congruent to zero mod four for all i, right? Because if you think about it, if qi were converted to 0 mod 4, that would mean qi is divisible by 4, right? So, one of these primes, okay? So, I'll write this, if qi were 0 mod 4, then what's that mean? That means that um, n Right? If one of those were 0, we're looking at this mod 4, then it kills off everybody, so n would be 0 mod 4. But mod 4, if we look at n, it's clearly, remember mod 4, that's going to disappear, that's gone. 3, it's within our, you know, our world, our mod 4 world. And so, but n is congruent to 3 mod 4, right? So that means that every single one of those q's, a prime factorization of big n, for every single q there, none of those are going to be 0 mod 4. So the next question is, well, what could, so when we look at something mod 4, okay, so any of these primes, we look at a mod 4, it has four choices. It can be 0, 1, 2, or 3. That's it. Uh, and so none of them can be 0, okay. So we won't keep that up here right now. And so let's go to the number 2 now. Also, qi cannot be congruent to 2 mod 4. Okay, so if you think about that, if qi were congruent to 2 mod 4, then what's that mean? If qi, say let's just do this case right here. I know we're kind of diverging from what a hell of this, but let's just say q1 was congruent to 2 mod 4. 
Okay. And that would mean, right, if you look at that, Q1 would be equal to 2 plus 4. If I use the K anywhere else, oh, use the K right now. Q1 would be 2 plus 4K, right? That's the definition of congruence. And so this means that Q1 would be equal to 2 times 1 plus 2K, right? And that just means that 2 divides Q1. And if 2 divides Q1, then it divides this product, right? Namely, it divides N. Okay? So if 2 divides N, but if you look up here, Clearly, 2 does not divide n, right? What kind of number is n? Well, here, this is even, right? This is odd, n's an odd number. So, we can't have 2 divide n, right? And so, this means that none of the qi's are going to be congruent to 2 mod 4. Because if any of them were, then n would be an even number, and we know that n is an odd number. Okay? So, let's keep this part up here. Thus, qi is congruent to 1 or 3 mod 4. Okay. That's where we're at now. Our goal is to find uh, what we're going to do with this, is to show that at least one of these has to be congruent to 3 mod 4. It's not on our list, so we add it to the list. Okay. So, suppose qi is congruent to 1 mod 4 for all i. Okay? Then, if every single one of these guys were congruent to 1 mod 4, then, we, then n mod 4 would be congruent to 1, right? Because what we'd have is, you know, look at everything here mod 4. Okay, this would be 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, all that property would just be 1, mod 4. So, but, clearly, and let's go back and look at n here. If I look at this mod 4, this guy's gone, right? 3, so it's the world. We wrote that up there before, didn't we? Probably erased it, so. Um, but clearly, n is congruent to 3, mod 4, right? So, let's come back here. So, this means that not every single QI is congruent to 1 mod 4. So let's come back. What's that mean? Thus, there exists some QI, at least one, okay? Such that QI is congruent to 3 mod 4, right? We showed, so again, you take a QI, right, some prime number, okay, and you look at it mod 4, it's either going to be 0, 1, 2, or 3, right? It can't be 0, we showed that. It can't be 2, we showed that based off this. They can't all be 1, right? Otherwise, it would have been 1 mod 4 and it's 3. So there's somebody out there that is congruent to 3 mod 4, okay? Uh, so picking on that guy right there, you say notice this QI divides N, right? If we go back and we look at this list here, all these guys, the P1, P2, all these guys, these are all greater than 3, right? They're all strictly bigger than 3. And so QI divides N, yet P1 all the way up to PR, these can divide in from the division algorithm to get a remainder of 3, right? Which is smaller than our divisor. Just kind of like we do with the infinite number of primes theorem. So, yes, yet. Yet P1 through PR do not divide in. Thus, QI is not equal to any of those guys. Okay? So, we add qi to our list of primes that are 3 by mod, 3 bar mod 4, right? 3 bar 3 mod 4, sorry. 
and we can repeat that process, right? All the primes of these guys up here. That's a two, I should have been R the whole time. Okay, so um, we can just keep repeating that process. So keep finding another prime that's congruent to three by four that wasn't on our original list. Keep constructing the new one. So we would do this again. Here now we have Q, or I guess QI, that we put on the list here. Go through the process again, find another one. Go through the process again, find another one. We keep doing that uh, for these. And that shows us that we have an infinite number of primes that are congruent to three modulo four. Okay. And there's, uh, I think it's Gearish Place there or something like that. I think I have it on here somewhere. That's, um, let me check the slide real quick. Yeah. So it, it's the next theorem on here. It says if A and M are integers with the GCD of A and M being one, then they're implementing primes that are congruent to A modulo M. That is uh, outside the realms of this course of our knowledge content for this. Um, we need more than just the number theory that we know right now. Um, so we'll just focus on these two right here. Um, congruent 3 mod 4 and infinite number of primes. I will tell you right now, since a lot of you have already seen your number of primes, and there's really no, I mean, the only number theoretic argument that we're using there is the notion of a division algorithm, right? And so um, this guy right here, I can see that popping up on your exam as a possible question. Uh, so make sure you look through this, you know this. Uh, if you have any questions, mark it down, shoot me an email or something like that. Uh, and we'll button that up uh, when I come back.